Hello everyone, I am Andrea, AKA Mrs. C, and today I'm going to teach you all how to draw perspective hallways, or hallways that employ one-point perspective drawing. Now, what is one-point perspective? It's a method of drawing that helps capture the element of space. Now, space in art is where you give the impression that objects are farther or closer. Now, one way that you can do this is by making some objects overlap with each other, so that way you can get the feeling that some objects are in the back while others are closer to us or in the front. Another way you can create the element of space in art is by making some objects appear smaller and farther away while others are closer to the viewer and look bigger. Now another way that you can create the illusion of space in a two-dimensional work of art is by using one-point perspective. Now, the rule of one point perspective is that there is a vanishing point and all objects that line up with lines that go off the paper or the canvas or whatever surface it is you're drawing on, they all align with the vanishing point. Now, let's take a look at some images here. Does this image look like it employs one point perspective? Not really, because you don't really get that impression that everything is lining up with that one vanishing point. It seems like they all have different vanishing points. Now, what about this next image? Does it look like it employs one point perspective? Yes, it absolutely does, because if you used a ruler or some other tool to draw lines, you would find that they all crisscross with the same vanishing point. Now, when did one point perspective first begin? Now, one point perspective was first created in 1415 by Italian architect Filippo Brunelleschi during the Italian Renaissance. This is when he developed the mathematical principles of linear perspective, which includes the concept of a vanishing point. There's not only one point perspective, there is also two point perspective, and I will create another video and upload it showing how to draw buildings using two point perspective. Now for this assignment, which I will be assigning to my sixth graders, you are all going to create hallway drawings that employ one point perspective. You can make these hallways look different from what your neighbors are doing. I actually encourage that. They don't have to look entirely realistic, but I want you to create details on the walls and on the floors and even on the ceiling that use one point perspective. I encourage you to please practice on scrap paper before you move on to the nice paper. And once again, start with pencil, not only on your practice paper, but also when you start on the nice paper before you move on to using Sharpie and colored pencil or whatever other supplies you want to use to create more details and color in your images. So let's get started with practice. Find a scrap piece of paper, a pencil, a ruler. Make sure you know where the final paper is for when you start your final project. And then let's get started. My paper was four and a half inches tall. So what I did was I made a four and a half inch mark on either end of the paper. Then I used my ruler, held it down nice and firm so I could draw a straight line that went through the middle. This is going to be the line that my vanishing point will be on. So my paper was about 11 inches long. So I made a mark right there at the five and a half inch mark. So that little X right there, that is my vanishing point. Now I want to take my ruler and create a line that goes from the vanishing point to the bottom right hand corner of the paper. You're going to want to repeat this step only making a line that goes from the vanishing point to the left hand corner of your paper. This is going to be the floor of the hallway that we are going to make. Now repeat this at the top of your paper. This is going to help create the ceiling that you wanna make for your hallway. Mine's not going to have perfectly pointed corners. The ceiling I'm going to make, it's gonna have a bit of a dome shape, but this is something that you want to draw to create more accuracy with your picture. Now I'm gonna be doing a checkered floor. If you wanna do something different, that's absolutely fine. But what I did was I made marks at every single inch at the bottom of the paper. Now use your ruler to draw a line that goes from the vanishing point to each of the marks that you made at the bottom of your paper. Because I'm making a checkered floor for my hallway, I need to start creating the horizontal lines that do not line up with the vanishing point. So I started by 
lining up my ruler with the edge of my paper, then drew a straight line across the top. Now remember, when things get farther and farther away, do they look smaller or larger? Correct, they do look smaller. Now what I'm going to do is every single time I draw a horizontal line that goes left and right through the checkered pattern, I'm going to make this line a little bit closer to the last line that I drew. Now I'm going to make some vertical lines to create the different sections in the glass that I'm going to have to create the aquarium that's on the left wall and also the ceiling. Remember the farther things get or the closer they get towards the vanishing point, the smaller and smaller they should be. So every single vertical line that gets closer to the vanishing point should look a little bit closer to the last line that you made because we want to create that impression of space and distance. Now since my right wall will have a bunch of picture frames, I'm going to draw a straight vertical line that shows where the right side of the closest picture frame will be. And then I'm going to draw a line that is where the bottom of all the picture frames will be and make sure that lines up with the vanishing point. Make sure you do the same thing with the line that will show where the top of the picture frames will be and make sure that lines up with the vanishing point. After you complete this task, you're going to use your ruler to start creating the gaps in between the picture frames. Now, remember, the closer that the picture frames get to the vanishing point, the smaller and smaller they should be. And then the lines that create the gaps in between, they should look less and less spaced out because we want them to look tighter and smaller. Now remember when you are creating the inside of each picture frame that all the lines that go off the paper need to line up with the vanishing point, top and bottom of the picture frame. Now I'm going to use my ruler to create the inside of each picture frame when it comes to the left side and the right side. Remember these sides of the picture frame should look narrower and narrower the farther down the hall they get. I'm now going to create these arched lines going across the top of my aquarium and try to make sure that these get smaller and closer. They're going to line up with those vertical lines that I drew on the left side. At this point, I'm going to start outlining details in my one point perspective hallway with Sharpie. Now I'm going to be using Sharpie and also colored pencil and some other marker pens to create more detail and add color. I'm going to be using wavy lines to make my picture frames look a little fancier. Now you can use bold Sharpies as well as thin Sharpies, but what I'm going to be looking for is attention to craftsmanship. Does it look like you took your time? Did you fill in all the cheese holes or does it look like you scribbled or were very sloppy with the lines that you drew in a lot of areas? This is why it's important that you start with pencil and you draw lightly with pencil so that way you can erase any mistakes that you might make. I decided I wanted to have a piece of furniture, so what I did was I drew a curved line for a bench that I wanted to have. Suppose someone wanted to sit and stare at all the creatures. Now, what I did was I used my ruler and made sure that the front of the cushion lines up with the vanishing point because once again all lines that go off the paper need to line up with the vanishing point that includes the top of the side of the cushion that you might notice that i did with my ruler then i'm going to draw the side here you don't have to add any furniture but if you do make sure that it obeys the laws of one point perspective. After this, I just drew some tiny little dots with some curved lines coming out to show some buttons that are in the cushion. And then after that, I drew some legs for the cushion 
using a Sharpie. I actually used a metallic Sharpie, which you will see in a little bit to make the legs of my bench. One thing I really love about metallic Sharpies is that they can be seen over any other darker art supplies, whether they're Sharpie or color pencil that you may have used. After this, I just added whatever detail I wanted in my one point perspective hallway. I used gold Sharpie to make some fancy gold frames. I also added some aquatic creatures in the tank that dominates the ceiling and the left side of my hallway. Now, this is something else entirely. You don't have to do exactly what I did here. Maybe there isn't a tank. Maybe it's all picture frames or some other detail on the wall. But whatever it is, try to give the impression that the farther away than the smaller they appear. That'll be a really great and realistic way to draw your hallway. Now, to my sixth graders that will be doing this art project, here's some things that I want you to keep in mind when you are practicing and then when you start working on your final paper. Is there a clear vanishing point? Also, do all lines that go off the paper or all objects in your picture that have lines along them that go off the paper, do they all line up with said vanishing point? Now, does it look like all the objects that you include in your picture, they get smaller and smaller the closer to the vanishing point that they get? And also, is there good craftsmanship? It looks like you took your time, you didn't scribble, and there's good detail. It doesn't look like you just quickly follow directions, but didn't get really creative with this project. Remember, this does not have to be a realistic looking picture. You can create a funky, underwater hallway. Maybe you could make it a hallway that doesn't have a ceiling. Maybe there's King Kong who's uh, opening up a part of the ceiling or something. Just get creative, think of something wacky, but remember to explore one point perspective and distance and craftsmanship with this project. I hope you all have fun with this project. I look forward to seeing what you create.